Yeah, if it shuts off, it shuts off. Uh, 
historic uh, 1860s uh, flag that is on the table. Let's see, Adrian's got a microphone, so let's just go. I just want to um, invite the parents of any of our students, whether you are nursery students or you are seniors or high school students, I need to talk to all the parents just briefly after the worship service. You'll see in your order of worship that uh, next week we'll be receiving the uh, peacemaking and global witness offering. And there is the insert in your order of worship that uh, comes from our denomination. But a portion of the offering uh, is uh, our local session gets to decide where it will go. And there's a nice little article in there about that uh, in your uh, bulletin. And the formal name is U.S. Togethers, uh, together, and uh, that's really worth your uh, your reading. Anybody uh, going to speak to that from the right here? Yeah, and it's no coincidence that next Sunday is Peace and Global Witness a Special Offering, which coincides with World Communion Sunday. And 25% of the amount of money that we receive from that offering will go locally to uh, the Korean Dahabi, who many of you were at her presentation two years ago in September. It is a refugee resettlement community. Um, this agency was Ohio-based and in Toledo, Ohio. It does things such as mentoring for children, women's empowerment, citizenship classes, employment program for refugees, and health education for refugees. So our offering helps both in the United States and globally for uh, creating resources for dealing with conflict and nurturing efforts for reconciliation. Great, thank you. Uh, I think our Linda is ready to go here. Let's give her a mic. Dave is ready to go. Here's a pro. In our bulletin today, again, there's information on this year's crop block. It will be on the 20th of October, and under the leadership the last few years of this young lady right here, it has grown considerably. And one of the new uh, additions this year will be at the McDonald's. You know, McDonald's on South Main occasionally will, will do this for various uh, organizations. And on the, on the 10th of October, the 20th of October is the crop block, on the 10th of October, on Thursday night from 5 until 8 o'clock. All, not all, but some of the proceeds, I wish you look, some of the proceeds from uh, uh, the people that come out to eat on that night from 5 to 8 will go to the crop walk. It will mean hundreds of dollars, minimum for uh, the crop walk this year. So we encourage everybody on the 10th, circle that day on your calendar, come out at dinner at McDonald's, and we also need help in. McDonald's does this. They like for people from whatever organization it may be to come out and help with serving meals, cleaning tables, that kind of thing. It's kind of a good time, really. And we need up to 12 people to do that. We already have upwards of seven. And so if you would like to participate on that night, on the 10th of October, uh, it's from 5 to 8, but the sessions are held for only an hour and a half. It's from what, 5 to 6 30, and then 6 30 to 8. You can sign up for one of those or both if you wait. And there will be downstairs afterwards, and you can talk to us if you'd like to do that. And Linda has even more. If you don't want to be a fast food worker, maybe you'd like to be a pizza delivery person. We have a need for that too on the 20th. So if you don't want to do McDonald's, let me know, and I'll set you up to deliver pizzas. <laughs> We've got a volunteer right here, please put up around person. Okay, so thank you. We hope to see you on the 10th and even more so on the 20th. How about that? Interesting things uh, coming at us. Any other general announcements like that that uh, we come before the congregation? I do need to say that uh, this is the last time uh, that uh, Mary Jane and I will be addressing the congregation as your co pastors. Uh, our retirement uh, kicks in on October 1st, uh, and sh uh, so on the far side, of, uh, starting on Tuesday, any pastoral concerns and matters uh, will be going to the Reverend David Montgomery, who the, the session has contracted with to be the interim pastor of this church, 
he's looking forward uh, to being here on Tuesday. And the, probably the best way to be in contact with him is just through the, the church office. Speaking of which, where's Cam? Cammy, our office administrator, is here today, and that's a, a delight for us as well. Um, the session has invited uh, Mary Jane and uh, me to uh, return next week uh, for a special service because it's World Communion Sunday, which is very dear to our hearts. Uh, that will be a service that we will be leading, and uh, there'll be some celebrating that goes on uh, after the service, and that should be delightful. But that's kind of the layout of how, how this goes. And uh, feel free to uh, talk with either of us or with our faithful clerk of session, Marcy St. John, if you have any questions. With that, let's celebrate the gift that our Lord Jesus left the early church and leaves for us, the gift of peace. Let's exchange greetings and peace.
With faith and confidence in the gracious mercy of our God, let us confess our sin together. Gracious God, when we are born, you are pure and perfect in your sight. As we grow, you are faced with temptations and trials that can lead us off the path which you would not desire. Forgive us, Lord, when we forget who we are. Forgive us.
our New Testament lesson for this morning is the 13th chapter of Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. This is a section of scripture that's most often read, you could probably hear it at weddings, but it seems equally appropriate for a morning when we're celebrating baptism. It's the great treatise on love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end, and as for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, the pride of a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. <laughs> and the greatest of these is love. Amen. Now I invite the children and children that we might have to come forward. Come on down. If you have any time, talent, treasure offerings that you'd like to put in our little treasure chest, we would be glad to receive those. Welcome to our son. And we have got cool things happening today, and that is no mistake. Jesus loves the little ones like me. 
me, me, me. And that makes me think Jesus loves the ones like you. Because that's where you hear, whether you're little or in between, you know, somewhere in between. Right, we've got to point at people when we're doing that. Jesus loves the little ones like you, you, you. Jesus loves the little ones like you, you, you. The little ones like you loves them through and through. Jesus loves the little ones like you, you, you. It's important to remember that in God's eyes, we're always just as much as these little babies are precious to their families and to us. That's how we are to God, no matter how little or big we are. And so now, Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go and therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in all. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us, puts his sign on us to show that we belong to him. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of his church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. So let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this Sabbath. On behalf of the session, I invite Michael Penrod and Kenneth Householder to come forward with their son, Alexander, for the sacrament of baptism. Their friends, Alexis and Connor Tui, will be standing with them as baptismal sponsors, and I invite them to come forward at this time as well. Presenting your child Alexander for baptism, you announce your faith in Jesus Christ and show that you want your child to study him, know him, love him, and serve as his chosen disciple. So I ask you to show your purpose by answering these questions. Who is your beloved Savior? Jesus Christ. Do you trust in him? Yes. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith? Yes. 
As you try to live the Christian faith, you promise to teach that faith to your child. Okay. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to support and pray for Alexander by word and deed, with love and prayer, and to encourage him to know and follow Christ and to be faithful members of the Church Universal? Baptism refreshes the Christian faith, shared worldwide and through the ages. And now with the whole Church of Jesus Christ, I invite you to stand and let's confess our faith using an ancient creed of the Church, the Apostles' Creed. And let's hear this as a form of poetry, a love poem about God's desire to be present in and through and all around us. You'll find it on page 35 of your hymn. Together, I believe in God our Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit on the right. Let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. So we thank you, O oh God, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. From it we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. What is the given name of this child? Alexander, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See what love our Creator has for us, that we should be called the children of God, and so we are. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, in baptism you claim us as your own, making us members of your body, the church, and your service in the world. Now we ask your blessings on this family today. Continue the good work you have begun in little Alexander. As he grows, let your truth be firmly established in his life and guide him by your Holy Spirit, that he may grow in faith, hope, and love, thus becoming a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And bless Michael and Kent as they grow both as parents and as people. Guide them, give them wisdom, give them patience, most of all, give them love. We pray that Christ's life love will be lived out in their home and in their worlds. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Through his baptism, Alexander has been received into the one holy, universal, and apostolic church. He is no longer a stranger, but a member of the family and household of God. Let's pray together using the prayer in your order. Holy God, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for guiding us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing Alexander to add to the great church. as we are. 
And I thought uh, there was a, a wonderful sentiment from taking it home and then hanging it up at home. But as I say, you find all kinds of interesting things when you go through the office. For instance, I found this picture. Now, CJ is here. You can't see him because he's way in the back there. But that's CJ Lane. How old were you at that point, CJ? You know? About 10? It says 10. Does it say 10? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't read from here. Thanks. Thanks for the help. You know, I'm getting old. That's uh, so if you, if you see CJ, you see the guy. He looks a little different than he did then. Uh, he's a cute little guy. He's still cute, but he's how tall are you? Right now. Yeah. Like 6'2 or something. 6'2. Okay. So you see, he's changed a little bit. And, and that happens, doesn't it? As we were saying with the children, people change. So I put another picture here that we uh, have actually had up, and we keep stumbling upon it because it has uh, several copies apparently in our office. And we'll see if we can get that picture up if it's not going to work. There we go. And there's a picture of our family on our first Sunday in a church we served in Western New York, in Albany, New York. And there you'll see our three sons. The scowling one in the bottom is Michael, who is uh, actually a delightful human being now, and even as a child, he's a wife scowling. And then there's Andy next to him, and up in Gary's arms is little baby Nate. And uh, boy, these, some of you have seen these young men as they come to church, and they have changed a little bit too. And they have grown, and life has brought them experiences good and bad and in between. Uh, but through it all, I love this picture because uh, I don't know, I look happy. Everyone says I look 12, but. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it just reminds me of a family you know, that, that loves each other and of how much we loved our three little boys back in the day when they were you know, unformed and full of potential and just perfect, right? They were perfect as far as we were concerned. But time does move on and things change and things happen. And a couple weeks ago, we had an event involving little baby Nate here. Let's see if we can get that one up there. And that was Nate, all grown up and just got married. And uh, he's very different now, he has a beard. And uh, he's uh, not, the, not the sweet, tiny little baby. As a baby, you know, he slept all the time, he's a happy little baby. And now he's really a quirky guy with a fantastic sense of humor, but a far cry from the little baby boy in that picture. But when Gary and I had the privilege to do the ceremony, I, uh, one of the lines in the meditation we did was I talked about how, how good it was to be able to be presiding at the wedding of our baby boy. And that's the point at which I almost lost it and so did everybody else. But standing there looking at my all grown up son, what I still saw was the baby boy and everything in between. And like so many people, Nate's had some hard times, he's gone through some tough stuff, he's in a good place now, and it doesn't matter if he's in a good place or bad place, he's my baby boy. And that's what, I guess the message that has come to me over and over again through the years. When we think about the way God loves us. Because in God's eyes, we are still the baby boys and baby girls. Perfect, pure potential. Love just as we are. The passage from 1 Corinthians talks about love and about all those qualities. And there's only one way that we can learn and live those qualities, and that's by first experiencing and accepting the love that God has for us, that we are truly, truly God's beloved. And so when we look at children, I think we all get a little misty-eyed at a baptism because not only are babies cute, but if this is where we celebrate this love that God has for us before we do anything to deserve it. God loves us. You know, they say children uh, can teach us about God because they're fresh from God, so they, they might have some messages for us. And perhaps you've heard the old story that used to circulate about the child in Sunday school who drew a picture and took it to the teacher and said, 
this is a picture of God. And the teacher said, well, nobody knows what God looks like. And the little child said, now they do. <laughs> <laughs> it also reminds me of something from my own experience. When I was working with a group of children back in New York, there was a little girl, she was in kindergarten, her name was Alexa. And she came to me one day with a picture of a rainbow. And it wasn't just any rainbow, it was, you know, sometimes kids scribble or do light colors. She had really made this a very vibrant rainbow. And it had all kinds of like rays of light coming out of it. It was just a prettiest little picture. And she gave it to me and she whispered in my ear. She said, this is what God looks like. And I thought, yes, it is what God looks like. Because it was beautiful. And of course, as the years went on, I thought, yes, this is what God looks like. And I think of our rainbow flag out front. A flag that has sent a message to so many people over the years. Mike was talking about when he saw that message. A message that God loves you as God's beloved child, just the way you are. Or as the choir sang, we love you just the way you are, so have no fear. You are welcome here. We're celebrating that love, that love that we can't even understand. We can just accept and appreciate. Because sometimes, frankly, human beings as we are, we're not so easy to love. But the good news is God loves us anyway, no matter what's going on. I'm thinking back to the time when, well, I'm thinking of all the issues that are around now that are so divisive, you know, political and social issues. And I remember back to the time when the whole issue of LGBTQ, well, just, it was just gay and lesbian ordination at the time, was being talked about in the Presbyterian Church. And I was having a conversation with a friend, and it was clear that we completely disagreed on the issue. And she had all of her points in a row, and I had all of my points in a row. And she at one point looked at me and she said, but what if you're wrong? And I said, well, you know, I, I may be wrong. On any given issue, at any time, I may be wrong. But I have chosen to always err on the side of love. So if on any given issue I am wrong, if I have to stand before God one day, I will say, I did it because of love. And that's been sort of a model for me as I have, myself have grown and matured. I do not presume to have the answer to every question. You know, when you deal with children, lots of times they're so convinced that they're right. You ever try to argue with a four-year-old? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> As we grow and mature, we learn that hey, we may not always be right. And so we have to decide. And for me, I've decided to always err on the side of love, no matter the issue, whether it be immigration, LGBTQ issues, gun control, poverty, race relations, care of the environment. I take my stand on the side of love. I look to Jesus and say, what would, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus relate to these people? How would Jesus walk in love in difficult places? One of the reasons I think um, that grief is so hard for people to deal with. We talk about people, oh, get over it. Or we say, are you going to get over it? And, you know, years ago, when I had my first experience of intense loss, I remember thinking, you don't ever get over this. You learn to live with it. Because, as we read in the scripture, love never ends. Our love for those who care for it never ends. And if that is true, how much more is it true that God's love for us will never end. We look at maybe Alexander today, and he's done nothing to upset any of us. Now, he may have cut you off, but I, I, he's not even much of that. So he is, he's perfect. 
and easy to love. But we look at him and we don't just see a baby, we see a whole future stretching out. And we see all the joys, we see all the struggles, we see the, the bruised knees and the whatever. We were talking about uh, middle schoolers the other day and talking about some of the common phrases of middle schoolers that some of you may have heard at some point, like, you are the worst mother in the whole wide world. Well, you are the meanest mother in the whole life. So I see that bad one a lot. And Anastasia hasn't done any of that yet. He's just sweet. And you know, I went through that with three boys in their adolescent years, and I love them just the same as I always do. Even when they rebelled, even when they messed up, even when they did really bad things. I might have gotten angry, I might have not been happy, but I never, ever stopped loving them. And that is so true. God as well. There truly is, this is at the end of the road here of my ministry, so I'm going to tell you one more time what I've told you, I don't know, countless times before. There is nothing, nothing we can ever do that will stop God from loving you. Because you are God's beloved. And when God looks at you or at me, he sees goes just like on the cover of our bulletin. You can't help but smile, right? If you can look at this bulletin and not feel good, um, it's too late. I should have done some counseling with you because <laughs> this, this is a feel-good bulletin. And God looks at us and feels the same way. We have a whole, you, we each have a whole life out of us. The baby's in the, in the narthex. Maybe Alexander and each one of us, you know, Daniel and Jackson, even CJ, God's not done with him yet either. A whole future stretches out. I know I see many of them up there too. A future stretches out for us. And we don't really know where the road's going to take us. We don't know what the future holds. But we do know that through it all, no matter what happens, we will be surrounded by the love of God. Because God looks at us and sees a future. God sees pure potential. And we have one last picture. Maybe. Pure potential. This is Heidi, he's Carver. And Wyatt is Lowell Carver. Wyatt was born on Friday. And mother and baby are both doing well. And uh, Heidi sends her regards to the congregation and asks that we continue to pray for her as she goes through these early days of motherhood. See what love our Creator has for us, that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. Thanks be to God. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a song that will remind us of this.
Now to the treasured moment we have every worship service where we can open ourselves up before the Lord to uh, come clean and also to listen, to listen for that still small voice that uh, the Lord offers to us in love uh, every day, but also particularly in our, in our worship gatherings. So, uh, Daniel's ready with the microphone down here, Jackson as well. Uh, let's open up our prayer time. Let's share some, some blessings that have come our way over our recent days or weeks uh, in our personal lives and our community. Uh, uh, what do we have to be thankful and grateful for this morning? Always our, our first thing to offer to God is our, is our thanksgivings. Jackson's heading toward the back. Uh, Danny, you want to hit Daniel? I head over to Echo over there with the windows. I'm just full of joy hearing all the little voices babbling and chattering and fussing with that. Um, the fact that we've got the narthex here that we can have the children near us, not necessarily away all the time, is just wonderful to me. Very nice. Thank you. Echo. I was very blessed that my son came down from Ann Arbor and took my daughter and me to Cleveland for a family reunion. I haven't been driving for three years except here in town. And I haven't seen some of them in three years. So it was a joy. Very nice. Thank you for sharing. What a delight. Other uh, joys or, or concerns we may have for others in our world? Uh, what's going on in their lives at this point? I just wanted to say um, that I feel very blessed to be in church this morning and in an environment where you can feel the love of God and love from other people. It's refreshing. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. I feel very blessed to come to Eugene and to find this particular church here um, with the atmosphere it has and the love that it has. It's a very great place and it gives me a lot of comfort and joy and uh, just a great place to worship God. Thank you. Uh, you folks are very dear to our hearts. Bill, my name is Bill.
Thanks, uh, Jackson. Thanks, Daniel. And uh, let's come before the Lord with our, our Sabbath prayers. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy God, God of power, might, master, creator, you that can dream us up and bring us into this world as helpless, defenseless little ones, pure potential, you that grow us up and never stop growing us do we take our final breath and even then you grow us into eternal life? How we give you thanks and praise for the way that you stand astride the ages, stand astride the days of our lives. With your love and your grace, your encouragement, your, your prodding, your forgiveness. We count nothing higher than our lives as your beloved children. And as those whom you have birthed into this world and birthed into new life and eternal life in Christ, we are, we are grateful for all the ways that you bring the birthing of peace and love and justice into the world, and, and sometimes we can be a part of it. So we're grateful for opportunities that we have seen around about us, for opportunities this church has seen to step up and step in alongside of you in your, your mighty works of love. Holy One, we are surrounded by a world that is in deep need of peace. We know that none of our ills, misfortunes, or evils transcend the love you have for your people and for this world. So give us hope and show us the little and large ways we can be your, your people, your partners, your family, as you continue to grow us up into your great realm. Bless our <coughs> tiny ones, such a treasure they are. Bless our, our school age youth as they develop almost by the day in their physical and emotional lives and intellectual. Bless our college age people in these <coughs> incredibly important formative years where every day brings new thoughts, new stretching, new adventures. Hold them all close as you grow them up. Lord, our hearts are filled with gratitude and concerns. And we have deep matters way in our inner hearts that we don't share with anyone. But we share with you because you know them already. Hear us now as we offer ourselves to speak and to listen in the silence of prayer. Now, Holy One, lift us up. Lift us up out of the, the failings, missed opportunities of the past. Lift us up into your future, chock full of opportunities 
to love our neighbors and to love people. We seal our prayers with the prayer our Lord Jesus taught all his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
believing that Jesus loves the little ones like you, you, you. Because, my friends, that is good news. The grace, mercy, and peace of God, our, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer, be with us all this day and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.